Smiling faces enjoying hard work in space. Everybody is well trained and in good health. But we know from past missions that long-term exposure to weightlessness induces physiological changes that strongly affect astronauts' health and performance. Maybe because space is still largely male-dominated, men have been the object of most scientific studies on these phenomena. Little is known so far about how the female body reacts to the prolonged absence of gravity, but that is about to change. At the end of February 2005, 24 women, all carefully selected volunteers, will remain in bed with their heads slightly tilted down at an exact minus six degree angle with the horizontal for as long as two months. They're not allowed to sit up for even a second. Not being an astronaut, this is the closest one can get to experiencing the effects of long-term space missions in the organism and develop countermeasures that will help prevent the loss of bone mass, muscular atrophy, or changes in the cardiovascular system. All are necessary improvements if the human machine is to match ESA plans for interplanetary travel and missions to Mars that could take up to three years. Countermeasures for current missions to the International Space Station are safe. However, uh, for long-term missions beyond the ISS, such as a human mission to Mars, uh, current countermeasures are not safe. Therefore, one goal of WISE is to optimize existing countermeasures and also to develop a new one for women. The Women International Space Simulation for Exploration, WISE, will be conducted at the MEDES Space Clinic in Toulouse, France. It's a joint initiative of the space agencies from Europe, ESA, France, CNES, the United States of America, NASA and Canada, CSA. Long-term bed rest studies have been conducted in the past with mainly male volunteers, but this new study is the most complex one of its kind ever designed for women only. The 24 women will be chosen out of more than 700 candidates, and not only their body, but also their mind will have to comply with strict selection procedures. Twelve women can participate at a time, which is why the study will be performed in two phases. They must be 25 to 40 years, uh, healthy, without any current uh, medical treatment, uh, non-smoker, no drug dependence, highly motivated, uh, citizens and residents of EU plus Norway or Switzerland, or US, provided that they live in uh, one of these countries. Once done with the three weeks of preliminary tests, the first 12 volunteers will be divided into three groups. One will act as the control group and will receive no extra stimulus during the 60-day bed confinement period. Another will be more active and carry out a rigorously designed body exercise program, while the last group will receive a nutritional supplement that will help them maintain the levels of muscular mass and strength. Not to break dramatically with their daily routines, like taking a shower or enjoying a meal, and to help them stay in touch with the outside world, all the volunteers will be allowed to read, zap the TV or surf the internet, as long as they do it horizontally. You are lying in bed, but not uh, completely at rest, because most of the time the subjects are very busy by the protocols. Of course, the days when the protocols are less demanding, the subject can uh, relax, they can read, uh, look at the TV, surf on the internet, and also we provide them uh, some lectures, uh, lessons uh, on the, to practice languages, for instance. Apart from increasing our knowledge of how the female body reacts to extended conditions of simulated weightlessness, the results of this experiment could be valuable to each of us by casting more light on how to treat pathologies such as muscular atrophy derived from a long period of bed confinement or osteoporosis, which is a common health problem in the elderly, mostly affecting women. Both optimized nutrition and also optimized exercise regimes could be applied for rehabilitating patients on Earth. Also, uh, our metabolic studies will shed more light on the causes and prevention of conditions like type 2 diabetes. That studies like this one are useful is beyond any doubt. But they are, above all, the first steps to preparing Europe for future planetary exploration. It would be a pity if this happened without women on board.